We have made it, friends, to the end of season two. Thank the golden potatoes. I've made it, and I didn't think I would. This season has been stressful, but also good in some parts, tiny parts, and I'm so happy to be done with it for now because I have like five other remakes with the same stories to review. But don't get me wrong, I'm very excited for those. Welcome back, or welcome to another episode of my series that is called Let's Talk About Scam. This is a series where I rewatch every single episode of Scam and the remakes and review them. So every single episode. I am looking at this as a challenge kind of thing to watch every single episode of every single remake because I don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to make it to the end. I don't even know where the end is. There's no finish line because um, Scam is still coming out with new seasons like every week. Anyways, so in this series, there will be spoilers if you have not seen Scam before. So sorry if you haven't go watch scam and then come back and then we'll talk so let's get started today i'm going to be talking about scam france season 2 episode 13 the final episode of season 2 and i'm so happy about that right finally um this is probably gonna be really short really short review hopefully <laughs> i don't know i don't really think there's much to talk about with this episode because it's pretty short yeah and not much happens in it. It's, it's pretty much just a wrap-up to season two when everyone's story is Madden's story, Charles's story. So yeah, let's just get into it. So let's just talk about what happened previously. So previously on Scam France, season two. So everyone is happy again. In the last few episodes, it was a pretty rocky situation with Madden and, and Charles and Charles's brother. But now it's fine. Everything is um, fine. But in the last episode, um, Charles finds out that he's probably going to jail for hitting that guy in the head with a bottle. That's that's where we're at, we're at right now. And this first scene in, the, in, the, in this episode opens up with Mane. She's walking to school. And in this scene, the girls are there and they're talking about Charles probably going to jail and the guy we hit and how it's just how they have to testify. So she, Mane walks into school and the girls are there waiting for her. And they tell her that they've been contacted by the police. So that's pretty messy to testify against Charles. And side note, I feel like they just needed a conflict to last until the end of the episode. I don't know. Charles doesn't actually go to jail, so I guess this... But I, I guess they're trying to be like, oh, your actions have consequences. And you hit a guy over the head with a bottle, so you're probably gonna go to jail. But he doesn't actually, so... I don't know. In, in OG Scam, I felt kind of... Um, drawn out, because the episode was almost an hour long. The final episode of OG Scam Season 2 was like an hour, almost an hour long. And it, it just kind of stretched on for a really long time. Anyways, so while this conversation is happening, they're talking about how um, Alex and Luca were talking because Luca had confidential information about the whereabouts of the people who beat up Jan way back when. So that's coming up again. And that's why Luke and Alex were, were talking. That's it. They never talk again. They're not really friends, I guess, so it like, makes sense. Anyways, so they all promised not to tell the police anything just to protect Charles at Madden's request. Um, they, they're all nervous that the guy who Charles be with the bottle and we'll talk. I mean, obviously, he might talk, guys. He got like 10 stitches from that bottle. And then Madden has a look on her face towards the end of the scene that says, oh, she's gonna, she's gonna talk to the guy. She's gonna fix everything because she's Madden. Next scene. So Madden gets home and notices clothes and sheets on her couch. And this is another hint um, at Luca, his home situation, how it sucks and how everything is just gonna move on to season three of this story and it works pretty well it's a pretty cool setup because at the end of the episode oh we'll get we'll, we'll get to that though i would really like to see the end of the episode with manon and luca anyways so manon walks into her house and sees clothes on the couch she doesn't know whose clothes it is she thinks it's a guy who mika hooked up with manon asks mika about it and this is just so funny he changes the subject <laughs> it's a very cute scene because they go from talking about the person sleeping on the couch to talking about sex it's so random 
<laughs> look at Mika's just he's so over the top and random in this remake and I love it I didn't think I would but like, I'm kind of enjoying it it's just it's a nice break it's a nice break from how mess this remake is I feel like Mika's my favorite character he's just there and it makes me happy and but let's move on people because Manon is now at Charles's place and she's trying in the scene to get him to apologize to the guy who he hit in the head with the bottle and gave him 10 stitches. And Charles says, no way, Jose. I ain't apologizing. And it's just very childish. Come on. You gave the guy 10 stitches, Charles. The least you can do is say, I'm sorry. He doesn't even do that. I, I mean, I get it, right? It's it's about pride and all that. He did to protect his friends, his, his buds, his, his fam. But still, you're gonna go to jail over this. Is it is it worth it? All you need to do is apologize and everything's gonna be fine. I mean, obviously that wouldn't, it wouldn't work like that in real life, but this is a show, so all you have to do is apologize and, and you're friends again. We'll go out and get coffee because we're friends again. Anyway, so Manon texts Daphne that saying that Charles will not apologize to the guy with who he hit in the head with the bottle. Okay, let's call the guy who we hit in the head with the bottle. <laughs> Let's call him Mike. We're gonna call him Mike from now on because I'm so tired of saying the guy who he got hit in the head with a bottle. So we're gonna call him Mike from now on. Anyways, Manon texts Daphne saying that Charles won't apologize and Daphne suggests that Manon call the guy and talk to him. Yeah, it's just like OG. It's the same thing. Manon's gonna talk to him. It's next day. And Manon is outside the police station waiting for Charles because he is in there what is he doing? Giving a statement or talking to his lawyer or something? I don't know. I can't remember, but it's police stuff and it's very important. But yeah, Manon is texting Mike while Charles is in the police station and she's begging him not to say anything to the police. And Mike agrees that, okay, um, sure. Honestly, if I was Mike, I would have been like, no, leave me alone. I got 10 stitches because of your crazy boyfriend. Don't text me again. Yeah, that would have been me because, um, right? The stitches. I, yeah, so Charles is now done at the police station. He walks out and Manon asks him how it went with the police. And he says, he says he told them everything. And I, yeah, it's like this no G, I think. Yeah, it is. He, William did tell them everything. He told the police that he assaulted that guy. And he's willing to go to jail for it. Yeah, so Charles says he might have a record. He points that out. And he also points out the consequences of that. Like, no med school, law school, anything like that. Like, no one ever points that stuff out. Like, the consequences of having a record. You can't do anything um, professional. I don't know, I don't know what the word is, but it's, it, it sucks. Um, it, it would suck. So yeah, Charles, he also says that he's going to have a party because his life is basically over. It's a very cute scene. It's 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 good. It's sweet. Now on to the next day. It's Macready and it's the last scene in the season. I thought I would do an intermission. I'm doing that now. Just to take a maybe one minute break from talking about scam. You can totally skip this. Okay, I just needed to, um, to refresh my brain for a second because it's just up in there, scam. It's everywhere. I have a migraine talking about this episode. I'm going insane. I mean, it's almost done, but I'm still, I still don't feel well. So I feel like I should just stop talking about it for a second and talk about something new. So I'm adding these now, intermissions, just to chill for a second. Okay, what are we going to talk about? Um, hmm. What have you been doing lately? You know what I've been doing lately? I've been doing a lot of um, reading. I've been reading a, sh a lot. I mean, I've always read. I've always been reading, but these days I've been reading a lot more than I've ever read. Um, my favorite, if you would like to know, my favorite types of books are fantasy books. I love YA fantasies. That's the only thing that I will ever read: YA fantasies or new adult fantasies. That's all I'm gonna read. That's all I'm ever gonna read. Okay, I've never stepped outside of that genre before. I've never read anything mystery or horror, thriller, romance. Oh yeah, I recently decided not to do a review for season one of OG Scam, like a full review. I decided not to do that because it was just really stressing me out. I don't know, doing these um, reviews has just been taking over, kind of, even though I only post like once a week. This is really all I, I'm doing at the moment, aside from school. I've recently gone back to school, which is just 
oh, kind of, kind of, kind of like a break from that, but at the same time, it's super stressful. It's just, oh, it's just like, oh, you know. As I was saying, I've decided not to do a review for the entirety of season one. Instead, I decided that I wanted to um, post my reviews for each episode separately for all, all the episodes of OG Scam. I was thinking of doing that, rewatching OG Scam and then doing individual reviews for each episode. I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if I'm gonna do it actually, but I've been thinking about it. Me and my friends have been thinking about doing that, like just watching it together, taking notes and then making the podcast and all that. I don't know though, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I do wanna watch OG Scam again. I mean, OG Scam, are you kidding me? OG Scam is the best game ever. That's all, that's, that's, that's all I have to talk about, guys. I've been reading, I've been talking about this show. Um, um, I didn't even ask how, oh my God, I'm so, inconsiderate i didn't even ask you guys hey sis sir friend what have you been doing um how are you um what are your what i don't actually want to know what your favorite um genres of books are maybe i would like to know that um as i said mine why fantasies that shit's really dope um but yeah maybe i should actually step out of my of this genre and do something else, read something else. I don't know, I'm kind of scared to do that. I'm scared that I'll hate it. And, you know? Anyways, feel free to tell me your favorite book genres. I really like to know, you know, like engage in all of that with the three people who listen to my reviews. Anyways, just end this intermission and get back to talking about this episode, this final episode. I, I've stalled long enough. Back to the show. Awesome. I'm happy. Okay, so Man and Charles, they're at the party and they're just staring at each other and then they start texting each other even though they're standing so close to each other. This leads to Man and being like, let's do it, Charles. Let's let's do it. Yeah. And Charles is like, hell yeah. They go to Charles's room to consummate their marriage while the party is going on. And then the guy from the cabin shows up, Roman. We see him again for the first time since episode two, four. I can't remember which episode it was, but I keep calling it cab a cabin. It's a country house. Because <laughs> in the OG, it was a cabin. Sorry. Anyways, I can't remember if Roman is in season three. Would it make a difference if he was? I really don't think so. He didn't really have much, much of a role in season three when he was Chris's boyfriend. We kind of broke up after a while. I, can't, I don't remember when that happened, but it did. Okay, anyways. In the scene, it's just flipping from Man and Charles to the party. So we go to Man and Charles for a second, ooh, naked, and now we're at the party again. And then we see Jan, Jan's girlfriend, talking to Emma, and she's telling her everything is fine between them. They're friends now. Manon tells Charles she talked to Mike. Mike is the guy who Charles didn't have the, yeah. She says she talked to him and told him not to tell the police what happened she convinced him with one paragraph she also says that she has to tell lisa and mika that she's leaving oh, i hate it i really don't like that i hate it in this and in the og all of them how they uh, i think all of the remakes do like this they have nora move in with william and all of them after they just got back together it's a really bad idea their relationship is still so fragile they got back together like a week ago and they're, they're already getting married and moving in and having kids it's it's not it this shouldn't be happening yet i'm no um what's the word couples counselor or whatever but um i feel like it's too soon um how long have you guys known each other for i think it was about a month <laughs> i don't know um it's just moving in with someone it's a huge what's the word a commitment it's a lot harder than you think it is because usually if you see that person once um every couple of hours you're not there with each other at all hours of the day when you move in with each other you are and it can get pretty freaking annoying because you just always seen them we breathe in the same air they're gonna be there's gonna be some stuff about them that you learn that irritates you and it's not gonna be nice okay it's not gonna be all fun and cute and pretty it's not it's, it's, Sometimes, okay. Not all the time, but sometimes it's gonna get pretty ugly and gross. Fine, let's just move on, okay. I really like this next scene, guys. Okay, so 
Next, Luca is talking with Jan and Jan's girlfriend and Emma. And then Jan points out Luca's shirt because so we the audience know that that is Luca's shirt because we saw the shirt in the previous 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 scene. I didn't I don't think I pointed that out. I just said clothes. But yeah in the previous scene Manon picks up a shirt from the couch when she's like to Mika, who is sleeping on our couch? Tell him to take his clothes. So she holds up that shirt and we we um, it's, it's it's emphasized for a second. And now in this scene we see Luca wearing the same shirt. So, and now so now we're like, oh shit! It's Luca. <laughs> Luca's the guy who's been sleeping on their cellar and on their couch. And then you're like, wow, what? What's going on with Luca? Why is he staying at man's place? What's, what's going on? I can't wait till season three. And yeah, um, anyway, so, but no, Gio was different. It was a belt, I think. But anyways, Manon notices that Luca's wearing the shirt. She's like, oh shit, that's the shirt that she, you're sleeping on my couch. Um, yeah, and she pulls Luca aside and ask him if he's the one who's been sleeping in their house in the cellar. And Luca's like, yeah, it's me. Um, and then Manon says he can move in into the apartment with Lisa and Mika since she's moving out. It's a very sweet scene. She says, you can stay as long as you want. My parents are paying and they would never know. So it's fine. You don't have to pay anything. You can just stay. Oh, it's so sweet. I love Manon and Luca. Their friendship is so pure. It's it's something I didn't know that I needed, but I'm happy that I got it. And it's great. That's the end of the episode. It, it, it was set up pretty well. It's wrapped up pretty well. And that's the end. Pretty decent. It was, a, it was a fine episode. All right, people. Overall thoughts of season two of Scam Friends. Let's just take a second to talk about it. Okay, so there were ups and there were downs, but I feel like it all wrapped up pretty nicely. There were some stuff that were missing from this season, so I felt unsatisfied with it. But I totally understand, okay? I'm not gonna be, oh, wow, this is so good. It's, it's great because it's a remake. So they expect you to have watched the original before going into this one so you know all the stuff that were taken out and not added character stuff plot lines subplots okay i don't remember much of what happens in season three but i remember enjoying it a lot more than i enjoyed the first two seasons of scam Prince. but the last time i watched season three was two years ago so that was my two-year-old self that watched and had pleasant feelings about season three so i'm going into it with an open mind and no high expectations. I know before I was pretty excited. I was like, oh my god, season three finally. Ugh. But now, um, I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about it. I'm kind of scared. I know. I've, I always see comments saying how good season three is. It's so much better than the first two seasons. But I don't know. Okay, I'm. I'm kind of nervous because Scam Friends is really playing games with my heart. It's throughout season two. Oh god, I hated I didn't like I didn't like <laughs> I hated is too much it's a strong word. I didn't like men and Charles much. I didn't I wasn't really feeling them as a couple. But then after a while I was like, wow, they're kinda cute actually. But then it kinda went down. I was like, oh, they're kinda boring again. Meh. But then they got kinda wow, they're kinda cute. Aw. And then um towards the end I was like, um, okay. Charles can um you can leave. You can go to London. You can leave. We don't need you here. I got pretty annoyed with this story again. And it, it sucks because I'm going to have to go through it again like five more times. <laughs> the second season so that every other remake. In this episode, Man and Charles, they're fine. Nothing really stood out to me. I believe them as a couple at the end. They're totally fine. I'm fine with them as of now. But in season three, I know they break up, I think. And I don't know. I can't remember much about Man and Charles in season three. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing as OG Scam, so. <sighs> okay. So, would I watch season one and two of Scam France again? No, I don't think so. I really don't want to do that. I don't want to go through that again. The chances of me rewatching season one of two, one and two of Scam France on purpose are very low. <laughs> I don't see it happening in the near future. Um, but that's all I have for today for this review and discussion 
of Scan France season one, sorry, season two, episode um, 13. Jeez Louise, I'm getting dizzy. Comment down below if, um, if you feel like it. Just please do that. That would be nice. Um, like and share maybe. Feel free to do that. That would also be nice. And thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you will stick around for more. Um, season three, I'm gonna be talking about soon. I don't know when I'm gonna come out with that. I feel like I need to take a break for for a second from Scam Friends and just focus on other things because um, I've had nonstop headaches since starting this remake. Okay, I'm being over dramatic. I have not. I'm fine. I'm I'm healthy. I try to post at least once a week. Maybe I'll come out with the um, season three next week. I don't know yet, but that's all. I'll see you all when I see you. Okay, bye, fellas.